Now, if you're one of the 40% of people that, that does actually have a will, then uh, I guess you get a, a pat on the back because 60% of people in this country, in England and Wales, don't actually have a will. Which means if they unfortunately die, they'll die intestate and it'll be all ancient laws according to the government that decides where their money and all their assets actually go. So if you have got a will, that's a great thing, but uh, of course there are life changes which happen, which might mean there are reasons to update or change your will. So we're just going to run through some of those key seven life stages that uh, happen to people and might need a review of your will at any of these stages. So let's just uh, run through them here very quickly and see if any of these apply to you. Now, when you get married, separated, divorce, or cohabit with a partner, or number two, when you have children, then things do change. Now, getting married simply changes your legal status, and that can easily invalidate your will, as can separation, divorce, and remarriage. Um, anyway, in any case, you know, this is a big event in your life, and it's probable that you'll want to add or remove beneficiaries, beneficiaries from your will when any of these uh, things actually happen. So it's a good time to review your will. And also when you have children, you know, you want to make sure they're provided for financially. So it's a really good time when you have children to think about your will and to think, you know, what might happen um, if unfortunately you or, you know, your partner might pass away, especially if you're unmarried. Um, finding guardians and, you know, particularly grandparents as they get older and making sure you've got the right guardians in place um, is absolutely paramount and you should really keep this under you know, almost continual review. So when you get married, separated, or when you had children, those two events are very important to review uh, your will. Now, um, I'll skip back to number three here. Let's have a look. Number three, when you buy a house, now it's a huge investment. You know, Often it's your biggest asset. So you really need to consider who's going to get your share of the property if you die. If it's held by a single owner in your name, then your spouse will usually inherit it and vice versa. But unmarried partners don't actually have automatic rights to a property. So if you're unmarried and maybe the property is owned by, um, in a joint tenancy, well, the whole property will go to the surviving partner, whether you're married or not. But if it's held in a tenancy in common, each partner can actually elect who will receive the share when they die. Now, talking about uh, families, uh, when new relatives join, whether through marriage or getting together, you know, or other people leave the family, um, things change. Again, marriage doesn't just bring two people together. Often, if it's a second marriage, you might have uh, children, stepchildren, and you might want to decide whether you favour biological children, your will, or treat all children equally. You know, you might want to think about sons-in-laws and daughters-in-laws or elderly or vulnerable relatives as well. So that's an important thing uh, also to consider. Now, when your partner or family member passes away, it's similar in a way to a marriage. Your will can become invalid if one of your beneficiaries passes away. So if this happens, it's really essential to change your will accordingly. When you inherit money or your financial situation changes significantly, um, your will might not actually reflect your financial assets and it might be a good time to sort of give it an overhaul, a bit of an MOT of your will. If you don't do it, a large proportion of your assets could end up going to the state rather than your partner or family. And who, after all, wants to give the tax man a load and load of money? I don't know many people that actually want to do that. And finally, an important one, but you know there are situations where you might not want a family member to receive inheritance. Relationships change. Sometimes you know, children can be estranged and not be part of the family anymore. And often people just decide that former spouses or partners, they just don't want them as beneficiaries anymore. And in order for your wishes to be binding, they have to be recorded in a legally valid will. And this happens, has to be absolutely watertight because, you know, contested probate where people contest wills is actually a growing area that we're finding we're getting more and more involved in here at Barrett & Co. So we need to make sure that uh, if this is the case with you, it's absolutely watertight. So those are the reasons um, why you might want to update or have an overhaul of your will. If any of these raise questions with you, please get in touch with Hilary Buckle at Barrett & Co. And we're delighted to help you and get you a up-to-date will that satisfies your exact needs for you and your family. Thanks for watching. Come and visit us at barrettandco.co.uk.